Man ne gesche. Lord Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, I will shout with praise and rejoicing to your name. At the name of all names. Listen, let me let me tell you. Let me listen. You know, God has purposed that all men sh should be saved. And he's granted that to the power and the authority that is in the name of Jesus. But there are many things that stand against that. There are many hindrances. There are many powers. There's many forces of hell. And somebody said, well, we, we're going to have to have some special weapons. We need some, we need some special military strategy because look at the power of this army that opposes us. The Lord wanted to give us some insight, reminded all of us and continues to remind all of us the situation that Israel found themselves in under the leadership of a, a king named Jehoshaphat who had an army that came up against them to destroy them, to wipe out their name from the face of the earth, to overthrow anything that they stood for, which primarily was the living God. Even though they did many things that were evil and wrong, still, they represented God by their very name. So the prophet of the Lord comes and says, I'm going to give you the insight. I'm going to give you the wisdom. You know, with the insight and wisdom, you could turn from being poor to rich overnight. With wisdom and insight, you could turn from being sad to rejoicing overnight. <laughs> with wisdom and insight, everything about your life can change literally overnight. I mean, the only thing that's preventing you is a lack of wisdom and insight. That's it. Somebody gets a wins, little bit of wisdom, which is on the lower realm of wisdom, just on the, 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 very, the very, as it were, bottom, bottom portion, outer portion. Wisdom. And they have clever inventions like a computer. Well, how about the depths of wisdom, you know? <laughs> what will that do for you? Open your eyes and cause you to see that the heavens right now are filled with the heavenly host cause you to see that there's more than just trees right out there right now. There's more than just chairs and people in here right now. There's more than what's been more than what's been exposed to the naked eye. It's more than what can be seen through the microscope. More than what can be seen through the telescope. There's far more. There's things that those particular instruments cannot detect. God should open your eyes. Faith would fill your heart and with faith you can do anything. You can move mountains. You can, you can rearrange the whole Topography of the earth. Hallelujah. You can be translated from one place to the other as Elijah was. They came to Elijah and said to him, said, you know, the king wants to see you. You know all the secrets. He said, well, just tell him I'll be right here. He said, no, 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 no. We're not going to go say that because we leave here and suddenly the Spirit of the Lord will take you and carry you away someplace into a high mountain. Nobody will be able to find you. They knew about Elijah. Uh, a greater than Elijah is here right now. His name is Jesus. See, people don't understand. They cannot see that Christ Jesus is standing in our midst. They think that one day in the future his kingdom will begin. His kingdom's not beginning one day in the future. It began 2,000 years ago. It was finalized 2,000 years ago. Today we voluntarily participate in this time of grace in worshiping the sovereign king. But one day soon he will come with a rod of iron and rule and reign sovereignly upon the earth. Today you and I get to participate with that which only the word of God can give us insight to. Those things which God spoke by his spirit through holy men through holy apostles and prophets. But now in these last days, he speaks to us by his son, by whom he created all things, whom he's appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. I see him, you see. I, that's why somebody said, why are you whistling and shouting? What is, my goodness, you really enthusiastic. If you've seen what I saw, you'd be enthusiastic too. First, you'll pass out. First, you won't be able to move for fear. And then all of a sudden, you'll be laid into a realm that takes you beyond religion into a place of relationship and walk with the king. 
Oh, God has poured out His Spirit in these last days that we may begin to praise Him and worship Him. That we began to magnify Him. The spirit of prophecy is how we sing. The spirit of prophecy is how we shout. The spirit of prophecy is how we begin to make known these heavenly things. Hallelujah. Pray That has been poured into us by the spirit of the living God and flows out of us like rivers. Rivers. Sometimes I'd be thankful if God's people had a fire hose worth. Sometimes I think a garden hose. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. And the things of this life will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. Lord Jesus is my Savior, you see. I was lost in darkness. I was on my way to an eternal, eternal destiny, an eternal prison with everything that is against God and against His love. And Jesus came and rescued me. I am evidence. One in many. Christ Jesus is who He says He was and who He says He is. I am evidence. People want to bring their data to the table and talk about this. I am evidence of what Christ Jesus did when he died at Calvary, when he rose from the grave the third day, when he sent it up on high and led captivity captive. I am a witness of these things. I am a proof provider. I am the evidence. I heard a dear man of God say something the other day so worth repeating. He said, a century ago, at Azusa Street in Los Angeles, California, suddenly there came a greater revelation to the church of the working power of the Holy Ghost. And there were only about 50 of them. 50. Not 120. 50. 50. 50. Mostly poor people who didn't have nothing else. They didn't have nothing else. They didn't have the riches and the comfort and trying to choose which job, which career, can't make up their mind what they want to do with their life. All they had was Jesus and a hope for Jesus and a hope for more. And a hundred years later, there are numbered about 600 million from 50. 600 million from 50. 50, 100 years ago. 600 million today. What's going to happen in the next hundred years? Woo! Listen to me. Satan comes along with all of his lies and tries to put fear in the heart. Nehemiah said, listen, these guys send letters to try to put fear into my heart. And then they said, oh, they're going to come and kill you. You better go lock yourself in the temple. Can you hear me? They're going to kill you. Go lock yourself in the church. Just hide away in there. Pray. I think there's a lot of people who look like that today. You know what I'm saying? They locked away in the church. They're afraid. Humanism. The legal position of many communities and even states in the United States of America are against the public proclamation of the gospel. Want to have all kinds of permits that you can't get. Nehemiah says, should a man such as I hide away for fear? Should a man such as I go and hide away for fear? Such would be a reproach. I'm standing right here and I'm not going to move. I'm going to be right up here in the front of everything. Today we proclaim liberty to you that you never go and retreat back into a place of death and despair. There's, no, there's nothing for you in your self-interest as you try to gratify the things of your flesh. There's nothing for you there. Have you not yet discovered? Has the wisdom not yet come into your understanding that there's nothing for you there? There's nothing that will satisfy in all the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. There's nothing that will satisfy. It's a temporal pleasure that produces within it great sorrow, that produces within it an eternal destruction. You can be seated. God said... God said, 
God said. God said, I will not be mocked. God said, I will not be mocked. If you sow to the flesh, you sow to the flesh, reap corruption. Now, you girls, when I tell you guys you can quit playing, then you can quit playing. And then, but now you've got to quit because you already chose. That's okay. Don't worry about it. Understand, it's a great example of what goes on. People all the time making up their own mind what they're going to do with their lives. When the Holy Ghost has come to lead us and come to guide us, he's got things he wants to do. But we have to come under his authority. We have to come under his instruction. People, I want you to understand, God opened up the door for us to be able to take this property. And I want to just begin to deal with the challenges that are facing the church of the Lord Jesus Christ here in San Diego County with 3.2 million people, of which I would dare say that the vast majority has never really had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. They've had an encounter with various forms of religion and various types and shades and shadows and ideas and concepts. But what happens when God's people take a hold of the power that is in the name of Jesus and they are the first partakers of that fruit and begin to live after the Spirit? After the Spirit and from that wonderful life of the Spirit and sowing to the things of the Spirit begin to reap the abundance of unlimited, immeasurable life called eternal life. About 13 years ago, we were out on to a piece of property in um, downtown San Diego, the old former Naval Training Center, at the crossroads of Harbor and Rosecrans. We had 10 acres of land and there that we used and a huge, huge facility. Probably resourced more than 20 acres of land out there, including the parking lots and all the other opportunities that we had to use the property, the land there, and probably you know, very close to 20, 30,000 square foot of usable building space. And the Lord had shown me some things and several people along with me, Geneva and other people who had been developed at the time to be able to hear the things that the Spirit of the Lord was saying. God began to talk to us about the very wisdom and insight that is revealed to us in the book of Nehemiah as Nehemiah would be, was leading a revival and preparing for a great move of God to see the glory of God fill the land of Israel once again. And, you know, as I began to read there so long ago, and of course that was actually about um, eight, well, well, that would be about 18 years ago when we took that property. I recognized, oh God, only you can fit us for such a battle. Only you can give such anointing. Only you can give such power and such authority. We saw over and again how literally thousands of people came to those meetings as we were able to participate with so many ministries and churches here in the city. And, be, and, and the Lord, of course, then caused us to stand in a mighty host of, of, of great men and women of God that we brought in from all over the world. Many of them, which are very close friends today, like the heavenly man, Brother Yun from the House Church of China. People like Tim Hall, evangelist of the South Pacific. Carl Sandicondia, God raised him up, shook South America through his ministry. People like Rodney Howard Brown. Just the list goes on. Became very close friends of ours. And then, uh, my dear friend Rodney was speaking to him one day and he said, Hey, Mark, the Lord showed me he's going to give you a property. You pass by it all the time and your heart's been stirred many times for the place. That was 13 years ago. And, and, and at that time in 2001, we received notice that we had to leave the Naval Training Center after every prophet, you named the prophet Harold Bradison, who's called the the prophet and father of the charismatic movement came to me and said, Mark, the Lord's given you this property. It's yours. One after another after another. And what happened was unknown to us. 
right now. Oh no, you know in the future when we stand there before him. But 13 years ago, you know, this after, after about 12 years ago after we left that property, we came by this place and we looked at this place and we knew the Lord told us this place, this 9.6 acres and all this property I want to give to you. I want it to be an, out, I want it to be an outpost, a resource for you to go and shake this region. What happened, I do not know. I know one day. But I know that God fits us for the battle if we want to be fit. I know I'm more fit now than I've ever been. I know now I look less to man and I look less to the resources of men. I look less to the numbers. I look less to participation of men than I ever have before. My eyes are more set upon Jesus. I know he, does, he can say by many or by few. He can do this with one, two, three, thirty, three hundred. 3,000, 30,000, what he wants to do. We want him to be able to do it. And I know that my sister Geneva, she it was so on her heart, she came and broke into the building. <laughs> she, the first time she's ever broke, done a, a, an illegal act. <laughs> she broke in. I don't know what they call that, breaking an entry or whatever. She broke in. It's a building next door, which is where we're moving to. We'll be, we're going to be here temporarily, and as we fix that up, we'll be moving in over there. My heart is so set on reaching the lost. My heart is so set on the, uh, the people of this city seeing a glory that there has only been stories told about, but there's been very few who will take a hold of the power and the authority of that glory that is in the name of Jesus. I want you to understand, I've watched as, I've watched as all these different people go and try to do these various different things to impress the heart of men that they might reach them. And I know that signs and wonders and miracles are a part of the gospel, but there is no power like the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus contains all power and authority within it. We have, we have underestimated the authority of that name. You've underestimated the power to shake a heart and shake a life and shake a city and shake a nation. Hallelujah. Jesus said in Matthew 28, 18, All authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go, therefore, in my name. Go everywhere and command everyone to repent. And there's only one means uh, that God has granted for men to be saved. There's only one power that allows us to repent. People think that repent is a message of condemnation. It is not a message of condemn condemnation. It's an opportunity to change. It's an opportunity to be released from prison. It's an opportunity to be released from a slavery under a very evil, tyrannical taskmaster it's called Satan. Repentance, to be granted repentance unto life. Hallelujah. As the council of Jerusalem described in Acts chapter 11, after hearing Peter's testimony concerning Cornelius' house being saved and having received the same Holy Ghost in the same way that they had received about nine years previous, earlier on the day of Pentecost. However, they discovered that Pentecost happens not just on the day of Pentecost, but any day. Because now we live within the Pentecost. Hallelujah. Uh, and we not only live in Pentecost, we live in tabernacles too. The Feast of Tabernacles, the dwelling places of God. To where that all those things that were type and shadows now find their fulfillment within our life. But somehow God's people have not been willing to be fit for the task and fit for the battle. To be able to deal with their enemies that have come out against them. Joseph at looking for a specialized weapon looking for a special means by which he's going to be able to get the job done and overthrow those who have who set on their annihilation. God says to them, your sword, your shield will not do. Your instruments of, uh, of war, your great inventions in weaponry, laid them aside. Today I'm going to show you how it's really done. 
I'm going to take you back to the days of Joshua, to the days of the conquest of Jericho. Hallelujah. I'm going to remind you of those things which I did through a people who had only learned how to be slaves every day of their life to an Egyptian empire who had no understanding of how to be an independent people, much less to live under the direction of divine power and glory. I had them march around the city. I had them shout and praise. I had them blow the instruments of worship. And I overthrew a kingdom, a powerful kingdom, the greatest defense city, the greatest defense walls to keep out the people of God that had ever been erected. That day he showed Jehoshaphat firsthand what happened in Jericho. He didn't have to have a prophet come read it, a priest didn't have to come tell him about it anymore. He that day was willing to now participate firsthand in those things that they had heard that God had done in the midst of the people of Israel. He said, you're going to go out and your weapons today will be praise. You're going to send Judah first and all you're going to do is shout and rejoice with all kinds of praise and adoration and singing before the presence of the Lord. Now listen, if you're a king, if you're a king and you're in fear of your life, in fear of your kingdom, that does not sound like an answer. It's a rather, you got to be kidding me. You cannot be serious. You mean we're going to go out there and we're going to expose ourselves before at least we had a shield in our hand and a sword. It didn't seem like it was enough. It truly wasn't enough. We didn't have enough numbers. But now you're telling us we got to lay those things down too. Lift our hands up in the air and walk around shouting. Oh, you're really enthusiastic. <laughs> oh, and the onlookers would say, oh, they're very enthusiastic people. What a condescending, what a reproachful terminology to the people of the living God who've been filled with the spirit of praise. Huh? God gave them that day a spirit of praise. He empowered them because they were willing to take the risk. They were willing to go out there. And I'm telling you right now, they went out and laid down their lives. You're never going to see an advancement in the kingdom of God. Quit playing games with yourself. Quit playing games with your mind. Quit playing games with your imagination. Quit playing games with God. Quit pretending as you read the Bible if you're not willing to go and lay down your life. You can talk about revival all you want. I heard Reinhardt say the other day, he said, God can raise the dead and he'll raise every man to life again. But there's one thing he will not and cannot raise. A Christian off the sofa. <laughs> You've got to get up for yourself and be willing to obey God and go. Christ Jesus can raise everything and anything where has all power in his name. But he will not raise you up from your couch. You've got to be willing to take the risk. If there's anything I want to do is I want to absolutely with total abandonment take the risk to be everything that Christ Jesus purposed me to be when he redeemed me with his blood, when he changed me with the power of the Holy Ghost, when he made me a new creation and gave me the ability to go everywhere in his place, in his position, declaring his word to a lost and dying generation. I do not want to fail. I don't know if I've failed before. I'll go ahead and take responsibility because I know what God's will was. But Father, 13 years later, we banged on this door over and over and over again, banged on this door, banged on this door to try to get this property. I mean, when you look at it, it's, the property is $18 million. I'm sure that everybody has that loose change. And then you count the heads and you count the numbers and you wonder, you know, what does it take ultimately to see a, a city shaken? I discovered God took me and said, I want to show you how to shake a nation because, I mean, I'm, I've agonized over this. Some people have agonized over their jobs. They've agonized over the career. They've agonized over personal interests. They've agonized over money. They've agoni agonized over their unexpected, uh, unrealized expectations, rather. I agonized over what does it take to shake a city. <laughs> I had 
different ministers invite me to come to different churches, some of them, very, very large churches, some in Mexico, some here in North America. I said, you know, I, I can't go anywhere. My, I'm consumed with the city. How do I shake a city? Why should I come and talk to your church about the, the move of God when I, I'm just consumed with this shaking the city? And then one day the Lord told me to go and he released me to go into various different places of the world to ultimately come to a point in 2006 to 2008, the Lord allowed us to shake a nation, the nation of Nepal. And there he showed me how easy it is to shake it. The city. Just takes anima, so. Just anime, that's who we, just we went. My wife and myself. I thought it took more. No, it doesn't take any more. I'll do it to two. If there's two or three gathered together in my name. I'll be in the midst. When Christ Jesus is in the midst, I don't know what kind of results he got. Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And today I look at a company of people, and though you're a small company of people, God has purposed for you to be mighty. Huh? He's purposed for you to be valiant. I am so blessed by how many people just re immediately responded to finally this battle, this first part of the battle has been fought and won. The miracle of us moving into this place has been accomplished. And so many people at the drop of the hat left everything, left home, left family, left TV, left couch, left comforts, left ease, and came here and started working desperately to get it all ready for us to be able to have church service here this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, everybody thinks this is an accident. Please raise your hand. <laughs> everybody thinks this is just a, 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 a just coincidental, poss coincidental possibility that could have happened to anybody. Just please raise your hand. <laughs> now, I want you to understand. I don't care who you are. Maybe this is your first time visiting here. Maybe you've been here a long, long time. God's got a divine appointment for you. I want you to get a little bit of wisdom and insight. I want your eyes to be open to realize that there's more going on than what, what's taking place on your job, what's taking place in your family, what's taking place in your finances, what's taking place in your personal concerns, these earthly cares that would captivate your whole heart. The, the cares of the world, deceitfulness of riches and pleasures of this world will keep you from ever having and living out this wonderful thing that God's purposed and planned for you. You've got to make a choice. There's a choice to be made. And I tell you, I believe that one of our great, one of the great things that God has given us the ability to do is to function as a group of folks with a lot of passion and intensity and commitment. Amen. Hallelujah. God, that's full. I, if, I, if I looked around and I said, what is one of our great passions and strengths? I'd say... It's a, a mighty, amazing commitment within a small group of people to set their hand to the plow. Amen. And Father is going to show us how to do things in a way and resource people in a way that we haven't understood before. We're going, we're going to see the power of God. I'm not, listen, I'm not looking to you. I want you to understand this. I'm not looking to you. I just want you, we love you. We appreciate you. You amazing group of people. But I want you to understand, I'm looking to the living God to shake a 3.2 million region county in the United States of America that I truly believe has a key to seeing national revival take place. I, have, I believe that Southern California has enough reproducible evidence to see that there's something very unique about this region. Uh, and, and, and you can't explain it and you can't, you know, you can't theorize about it. You just got to look and say, wow, look at all the wonderful things that happened. And you could say, well, you know what? Those wonderful things could actually happen in any city, in any state, in any nation of the world. And I would agree with that. But the facts of it all, they happened here. Azusa Street happened here. Seven great denominations that have shaken the world, that have filled the world with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ come out of Southern California. Assemblies of God in Foursquare being two of them. 
<laughs> you can't go anywhere and not see the effects of the Assemblies of God in the Foursquare Church. Come on now, people, this is amazing. I was just in Japan and Father was giving me such an incredible passion and burden for that nation, a free society, and it's the most unreached people group I've ever been to in my life. The churches are small, 28 million people in Tokyo. There's 2,000 churches. The average size of those churches are 30 people in each church. Free society and the gospel, the roots of the gospel have never taken, the, the seeds of the gospel have never taken root. And, you know, looking at, looking at those kinds of results, you can, become, you can become overwhelmed. You can look back on the past and you can say, you can talk about and wonder about your past experience. Why is it that you've not been successful? Well, God's been trying, the reason you've not been successful, God's been trying his best to show you what's hindering. Amen. Huh? Amen. And people have problems. Look. Don't blame God for your problems and don't give up. I mean, my goodness, where else can you go? I don't care what problem, what issue. Where else, where else can you go? You, you, but to Jesus. Who else really even cares for you? Come on now. Who cares for you like Jesus? Who ever died for you so that you could live? Huh? I know your mother loves you, but I mean, come on. You make a transition out of this life into, that, into, into the next life and you'll disco discover that even though you love your children desperately and you, and you love your parents, you love your mother and your father, you love your wife, you love your spouse, when you step into his realm of his love, that doesn't even seem like love anymore. Well, it's still love, but there's just so much greater love that, it's, that you have no attachment there. You have a greater attachment here. Reality of it is, is we don't have to die and go over into the other line to begin to experience that. The Holy Spirit has brought it right now for anybody who wants it. And the world is desperate to see it. Amen. Hallelujah. I know that the Lord Jesus is desperate to have a glorious church. I know that. I, I don't have to sit here and, and, and try to convince God, oh Lord, you need a glorious church. If you had a glorious church, I'm telling you, things would advance so much quicker. And let me describe what your glorious church looks to looks like. It's full of love and it's full of joy and it's full of your glory and it's full of your presence and it's so full of your life that if the sick come in, they're instantly healed. The Lord already came up with that idea. That's his idea. He, he, it's not us trying to convince him. It's he's trying to convince us. He's looking for someone. I mean, imagine, think about yourself. When you walk into any place and, and you're going to be getting together with family and holidays and, and maybe company parties and whatnot, who stands out the most? Who stands out the most? This, the person that stands out the most is the person that's most cheerful. The, the, the church person most gregorious, most friendly, they alight in that dark place. Oh, we, 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 we begin to conceptualize things, weaponry, strategies that really have nothing to do with Father's will and purpose. He just wants to fill us with joy and rejoicing and praise and thanksgiving. I mean, when you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and that's really all that matters, then, not, then your joy and your rejoicing remains unchanged because He's unchanging. If you were to wake up and He was all of a sudden in a bad mood and didn't like you or troubled with you or upset about you, then yeah, you could then be upset as well. But He's unchanging. He's full of joy and mercy and grace and loving kindness and every good thing that pertains to to life and godliness. That's who he is. So when your relationship with him is all that really matters, your joy is unchanging. That's why Habakkuk was able to say in Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 through 19, he says, though there be no calf in the stall, no fruit on the vine, though there be no laughter, no merrymaking, yet I will joy and rejoice in God my Savior. I go up upon my high places. Yeah. And the greatest disaster, nothing more important to you than food. It's true. You may think it's not so because your cupboards are full. 
Huh? You may think it's not so because it seems, you know, the grocery stores are full. But let there come an occurrence in your life where all of a sudden that's not the case anymore and you discover how important that is to you. <laughs> Habakkuk says it can be total famine and I'm still joy and rejoicing because I go up into my high places. I'm going to go up in, in that place that I've been given in God and there interact with Him. I mean, my goodness, dear people, when you don't count your life dear unto yourself, what should it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Let me just say this. Why should a prophet of man, if he works his whole life and, and, and earns $100,000 to retire on and he loses his own soul? Well, how cheap are you selling out for? At least the worst thing that Jesus was talking about was selling out for a gain of the whole world. Now, what's your price? What's your price? To lose your joy, to walk away from your relationship, to have all the benefits of God's glory and goodness in you. What's your price? What you sell out for? What do you change for? How do you fall out to the enemy and misrepresent God? Ah, I tell you, in the name of Jesus, Satan's not going to be able to deceive you anymore. Huh? You'll be able to make honest and Sober choices. In Jesus' name, I call the fire of God down upon your life right now. I call, the, I call the glory and presence of God upon your life right now so that you will always see Him before you and on your right hand that you should not be moved. But you can be moved if you choose to. At least you know consciously, I'm choosing now to fall out to the enemy. I'm choosing now to stand on the other side against God in my choice. I'm choosing now not to represent Him. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> then I believe if you had that kind of wisdom and that kind of insight, you'd choose not to fall out to the enemy. You'd choose not to misrepresent him. You'd choose rather to give yourself over to these things that look like you've been transformed and translated into the realms of the heavenly. Transformed by the power of God and made a new creation. You know, we're going to start, we're going to start several different ministries I'm passionate about starting the school of spirit. I'm going to take people into a room who've only spoken tongues and never interpreted, and I'm going to show you how to interpret. I'm going to show you how to flow in the Holy Ghost to interpret tongues. I'm going to take people in a room who've never known that, that they didn't even know the gifts of the Spirit were available today. I'm going to convince them from the Word of God because the Word of God has authority and power to change an honest heart. And then the power of God's going to come on them. They're going to get baptized in the Holy Ghost and they're going to be, data, they're going to be a data point. They're going to be a proof provider and a witness that these things are still real and true today. Amen. I'm going to take people who've had giftings who've on their life, like prophecies. I'm going to prophecy, and I'm going to take them into a room, and I'm going to show them how to let that gift be exercised. Because I understand this. If you begin to participate with God, then you'll have everything that he described in his word. When you don't participate, you've got nothing. If you want to, if you want to participate in a greater love, you've got to start walking around hugging people and caring about them and kissing them on the cheek kind of thing, you know. <laughs> Smiling and saying, it's good to see you. And stop participating with hate and strife and criticism and envy and hmm, suspicion. I wonder who this person is. <laughs> I mean, I believe that one of the great things that God's people could grab a hold of is God said, love thy neighbor. Love thy neighbor as yourself. My, there would be a transformation of a nation if God's people begin to love thy neighbor as yourself. The Lord showed me that's the relationship we're to have with the world. The relationship that we're given the grace of God to have with one another in the fellowship of God's people is to love one another like he loved us. Can you imagine such a glorious church? I tell you, I am so committed to that. I'm so committed to seeing you take your families and get close with other families around you so that you can begin to model that which you've been talking about. I'm so interested in seeing you get so intimate and so loving and so caring about the people around you that it just from that core begins to explode. It becomes a critical mass and creates a massive explosion. Of the power of God's grace. And you thought you had to go fast for 40 days. No, you need to start loving people around you. And if you need to fast for 40 days to be able to love people around you, then get with the program. Get her done. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> we can do the school of the Spirit. We can do the school of evangelism. And I'm just so blessed by what, by what Kelly and and Adam and Cade and other people 
uh, Angelo and others who have been participating in. We're going to take it to another level. We're going to do a school of missions. I asked one of the great missionaries of the 21st century to come and head up the school of missions. He told me he would. And right now he's now backpedaling on me because he's not listening. He's supposed to listen to me actually. But I'm not, that's not the subject. I'm not going to get into that. Forget about that. But we, I'm not going to stop. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to stop. Do, we still do, still do it. We can do a school of music. Joe and talk to Joe and Becky. And Joe and Becky just ready to come. And, uh, you know, Joe's sister does uh, the worship for Joel Osteen. And they have, the, they have the greatest connection of all the worship leaders and all the, you know, ministries of music in the world. And they've been all over the world. And they're like, Mark, we'll come. We'll just come. Or, or if you just want us to come once a month, we'll come once a month. We want to help build. And the Lord's given us a great company of people to help us build. And we want, to get, we want to help you understand how you can help us build as we build together with the Lord Jesus Christ because unless, it's his building. It's he, he, he builds the house. This is his church. And this is his. And on the foundation and revelation of who he is, that's where he builds his church. And when you begin, hey, listen, when, the, when Jesus Christ becomes more important to you in your ministry, in your life and in your ministry, his name and his power of his name, everything changes. We can take people in a room in school spirit. Let me talk about that more. Let me show you how to flow in the word of knowledge. Let me show you how to make it so simple. Be, and, and help you to distinguish it from exhortation and prophecy. And, and, and help you to realize that it only works in the context of Jesus' name. And if you don't say Jesus, it ain't going to work. Because all power and authority is in his name. If you, I can show you how the word of knowledge works with Jesus. Real quickly, just a little advertisement. Nathaniel's first time Jesus is shown to actually function in, in the word of knowledge in a very unique and specific way. Nathaniel comes, first thing he does is, oh, behold an Israelite. You know what? That's just about as insightful as saying, oh, behold an American. Or, oh, behold an Asian. You know, it's pretty obvious. Behold, behold an Israelite. The next thing goes deeper in whom there is no guile. Huh? What is it all about? Getting his heart into the kingdom. Ha, ah, hallelujah. Because here comes a skeptic. Hallelujah. I sat down on airplane the other night. And as I do, I'm always praying. I, and I practice this. I always do this. Lord, give me a word of knowledge for the person. But I don't wait for a word of knowledge. Okay? I got my seatbelt. As I'm getting my seatbelt put away, or moved out of the way so I can sit down. I said, hey, how are you doing? I mean, I'm, I'm transferring the anointing through. Hey, how are you doing? I saw how, hey, how are you doing works. Huh? I said to people, hello, to a nation and watched hundreds Maybe even thousands of devils come out of people instantaneously. People that were schizophrenic. People that were wild men on the streets. Just with a hello. I found there's a power and an anointing in a hello that's full of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I'm full of the Word of God. I stay that way. I want you to stay that way too. That's His glorious church. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. And so I sat down. As soon as I sat down, because it's my practice. It's my practice. Lord... Tell me who this person is. Before I'm going to ask them who they are, I'm going to ask the Lord, who are they? You with me? That's how the word of knowledge works. I don't try to invent anything. I, I sat down. I heard the word intellectual. I know exactly what's going on. I said, what school you go to? He said, I just dropped out of Princeton. And then the Lord gives me more. I take one step at a time. Because it's all about reaching his heart. I want to train people to do that. Anybody interested? I want to see people be able to develop and begin to move in gifts of healing. I want to show you how easy it is to do this. We make it so esoteric. It's not. It's very practical. It's something that just works when you're willing to hook up with that name that has all power and authority. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I heard... I heard Reinhardt. I, I love Reinhardt Bonnke. If you don't love Reinhardt Bonnke, there's something seriously wrong with you. <laughs> and nobody done... Um, Reinhardt was thrilled the day that he brought one person to Jesus. And then uh, that led to one day where in one single day, one million people came to Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to follow that, I tell you right now. I am, I, some people can talk about him all he wants. And every time I've ever heard him preach, it's been powerful, 
revelatory. People, God has blessed us with so much access on YouTube to so much great ministry. Don't waste your time diddle-dallying around the periphery. Go to the heart of the matter and look at the power of God shaking the earth. And uh, Reinhardt tells about how one time these four uh, witches in Africa came out to curse him, to paralyze him. And they couldn't do anything, so they sent for the greatest uh, person in witchcraft that they knew of who actually came out of America, believe it or not, and to come and help them uh, curse Reinhardt. And Reinhardt said, I never felt anything. All I felt all around me was the anointing, the presence of God. I felt so full of joy. And they're out there doing all their cursing stuff. Huh? And then, and then they're still cursing. They're all set up in all their different places. And he walks out and says, Hallelujah. And when he did, the, the head witch from America had an asthma attack. <laughs> <laughs> And they were carrying the person out because they were dying, you know. And, and Reinhardt said, I felt like going down and praying for the person. He didn't even know what was going on at the time. It was because one of the witches got, gave their life to Jesus and the crusade came to tell him what happened, that he discovered all of this. Huh? Man, the power of God. They just said, just in a practical, hallelujah, your hallelujah can change the world if it's filled with the faith that is in Christ Jesus. For God has given him a name. That is above every name. That at the name of Jesus. Yes. See, we believe that he has all authority in heaven. But we don't really believe that he has all authority in earth. We believe that we've got to go pull rabbits out of the hats for folks. We believe we've got to talk about evolution. We believe we've got to talk about... We've got to provide proofs that are intellectual. No. All I've got to say is the name of Jesus. I was in, standing on the border of China and North Korea. Wanting to go into North Korea. I was in Yanji, China. And... Um, that day, God set up something that people had been there in missions for three years had not ever seen nor heard about. And that was a North Korean man had given a visa to come over to China to get medication. And it was evidently a man of influence to be able to do that. And the first thing he did is he showed me his pen of Kim sung il who was the dictator, the God at that time. Because they literally worship him as a God or did. He knows who God is now. And he showed us his passport in North Korea. And he's talking away back and forth to the translator. The translator's talking to him. I, I, knew, I know what Jesus is in Chinese. You know, and I know what Jesus is in Korean. And I didn't hear a Chinese Jesus and I didn't hear a Korean Jesus. And I stand there for about five minutes. I said, time out, man. I said, hold up. I said, you say, I, want, I don't know what you're talking to him about. and That's fine. And I can get a little bit, of, you know me, I can get aggressive. As soon as I put the war paint on, okay, watch out. <laughs> We're here for Jesus, not here for talk about whatever, the weather. And uh, I say, you translate exactly what I said, say right now, word for word. And I started to say to the man, have you heard, have you ever heard about, and I didn't even get Jesus. The atmosphere anticipated the name. Whew. I'm telling you. God's showing me. God training me. This is, how I, this is what He does. He ch changes our lives by training us and showing us if we'll get to the task and begin to participate with Him. Our eyes are open and we'll discover weapons we never realized existed. The power of that name. I said, has anyone ever told you? Have you ever heard? Never said, Jesus, I said three or four words. Has anyone ever told you about? And he's sobbing. At this point, his, his eyes become filled with tears. I mean, they're flooding down his face. And I said, Jesus. And his whole body began to tremble and he began to shake. His life was transformed by the power of that name. This is the authority that is in that name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue confess. It is by the name of Jesus that man's heart can be transformed and converted. It is by the name of Jesus that mind-blinding spirits that keep them from beholding the gospel are instantly and totally broken. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
I'm looking forward to things God's going to do here with you and through us. We're going to take the city. I, I'm telling you right now, God has given me faith to take this city. We're going to take this city by the end of 2014. Who knows how many thousands of people we're going to transfer through this place. And this, 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 this ministry is going to radically grow. And God's going to do it. He's going to give you special grace in this time of His power. In the day of His power, the Scripture says, His people shall be willing. And I'm telling you, uh, if you were with me in the days when we took over the former Naval Training Center, your eyes were big. But I, my eyes are bigger now than it was that day that the Lord took me to that building. I, I'm telling you, this is where we were. We were in a transition. We were over here about two blocks away. We found that church over there because we were here. We were here. And the door was, it was brass. We couldn't get in. There was no way for us to get this property. So we took the property right down the road. And that God worked that great miracle. And it wasn't too long ago. And the Lord began to lay in my heart. I came back... And God did great miracles in 2008 in Nepal. And I told Stuart and some other people around me, I said, I'm really lost all interest in this property. It's just not big enough. I don't have elbow room. I can't get a vision for what God wants to do. I'm confined in a small place. And God said, I'll set you in a large, large place. And so I said, I'm ready. I'm done with this thing, man. I'm done with it. 2010, I was done with the place. And I'm just like waiting. I'm saying, okay, okay how we, Lord, how are you going to work this miracle so I can get out of this? Because when we got that, I believed at that time that we were actually going to begin to take other properties. And, and the Lord had already set things up at the time for us to do so. And that we were just going to make that the multimedia center. And, when then, and, and things would move forward. And, and, and what happened was some of the people that were key players opted out. And we leave all that to the Lord. Because I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what crisis or what events happen in your life. God's going to get his work done through you. I mean, even just think about it. I mean, Nelson Mandela just died last week. Just think about, just from an earthly point of view, Nelson Mandela said, don't remember me or don't praise me for any of my successes. Remember me of how many times I got up from my failures and did it all over again. That's pretty radical. It is radical. I didn't get to hear a lot of shout on that. Maybe I should say it again. Don't remember me for my successes. Remember me for how many failures I had and yet I still got back up again. Hallelujah. Huh? <laughs> from the, you He's a modern-day Joseph. And what, what, what would have happened if he was full of the Holy Ghost? He went from prison to the, to the presidency. Come on, man. That's just in the natural. What can you and I do to the power of the Holy Ghost? You think Reinhardt's special? He's not special. He was available. He was available. You know, I'm gonna, you know how Reinhardt ultimately comes into the kingdom of God? He lived in, his family is from the woods, backwoods of East Germany. One day, an Assembly of God missionary lost his way in the woods. He lost. He got lost. Literally lost. And instead of panicking, he found this village. And he walked in the village. He says, does anybody in this village need to be healed? That's the best that's the Assembly of God missionary. He knows what he's doing. Right? You go everywhere preaching the gospel, healing the sick. So he, he, he so I said, does anybody need to be healed? Yeah. Bonky house. There is someone over there terribly sick. It was his, Bonky's grandfather. Had a terrible disease that caused him such continuous pain. They said all throughout the village they could continually hear him screaming day and night. <laughs> the Assembly of God preacher who got lost in the woods. Assembly of God missionary, lost in the woods, lost in the woods. Assembly of God no account missionary. Ha! Ha ha ha! You're spending his life in East Germany at a very de desperate time. Lays his hands on him. The man was instantaneously healed. And then Grandpa Bonke's son becomes a preacher, huh? who is Reinhardt's daddy. And they had this little teeny church, about 30 people. About 30 people. To be, you don't imagine it that way. You, you, you imagine it if you were born in other circumstances and had other connections, and then you could be used. No, no, no. God's looking for anybody, anywhere. He's not particular. His eyes go to and fro looking for someone. This is the day. This is the day. Right now. This is the day. And by the help and the grace of the Lord, what we're going to do is we're going to, everything that we do in ministry, we're going to make sure that it meets one criteria. It's a doorway into Christ Jesus that is a doorway into the local church and I don't know of any better local church than here.
right here. I mean, I praise God for the other local churches. I mean, but you know what? I, I really believe in my ministry. I believe in the integrity of my heart. I want everything that God has purposed. And so that's why I say, I don't have any better church. I believe it. I, I don't want a church with a bunch of people sitting around sad and unhappy and miserable and, and complaining and arguing. I'm going to run all them people off. And you can say I'm mean because they ran them off. I'm getting rid of the dead wood. <laughs> Somebody said, a preacher said, how do I get rid of the dead wood? I said, call the fire of God down. It'll burn up the dead wood and the gold will shine bright. That's all you'll see is precious things. Everybody wants to be around that. Come on, man. Come on now, listen to me. The only way anybody is ever going to see Jesus Christ is through you. That's the way God's purposed it. The only way the power of God's going to be revealed is through our lives. That's the way God's purposed it. And I'm not going to bear false witness against him. And I'm not going to misrepresent him. And I don't have to be stressed out about it because I don't, I'm not sufficient for these things. But God is my sufficiency. I can rely on him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tonight we're going to... You know, we're going to do what God's given us to do, and it's going to go to another level of praying for the sick. And um, we're going to see, we're going to, and we're going to do it every Sunday night. Every Sunday morning, we're, it's going to be about reaching the lost. You know, we're going to serve. We're going to do everything possible to bring the lost in here. I remember what, I remember, I remember what we did in, in other nations and other places. We went door to door inviting people to come. We spent money on advertisement getting people to come. Huh? I don't want other church people to come. I want the lost to come. Just inviting them to come. Whatever we need to do to get them to come, we're just going to process them through Sunday morning. It's going to be about filling the place up. Hallelujah. With the lost. And we can get a lot of people in here because we can still move that. While we're waiting to get in over there, we can move that platform back that way some more. Just jam-pack people in here. Sunday night is going to be about praying for the sick. Preaching a radical message on Jesus Christ, the healer, the same yesterday, today, forever. Watch the miracles increase because that's what God wants to do. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday is going, about, is going to be all about bringing people along from wherever they're at, taking them to where God wants them to go, just building bridges for them. I, I was telling somebody, if I, wanted, if I was going to rename the church, I would name it Change. <laughs> and the, all the ministries inside of cha the church Change would be bridges. So no matter where anybody's at, they can go to the next place in God that God's calling them to go. They know how to get there. They're not just stuck. Why do I have to be sad any longer? Maybe you need to be healed of a mental disease and you've never recognized it. Depression. There are people who are depressed and it's because, and it could be for all kinds of different environmental and spirit. Well, environmental will take care of it because the spiritual is in the environment. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hallelujah. We want, you to be, we want you to be what God wants you to be. Is there anything wrong with me wanting you to be what God wants you to be? He wants you to be full of joy. He wants you to rejoice evermore. Why is it that everybody's upset at me? Because I'm doing my job. I'm the joy inspector. <laughs> yeah. huh? Everybody stops for the fruit inspector. They don't get all upset because the fruit said, you, well, you got any fruit in the car? The guy's doing his job. <laughs> I'm the love inspector. That's my job to participate in reproving, rebuking, correcting, instructing so that you can be thoroughly furnished unto every good work. Why? So that the gospel might be preached so a glorious church might be seen. I'm not interested in being around a bunch of people that as soon as they leave you, they start talking bad about you. All that, all that nonsense is evil. It's demonic. It's going to be forever cast away out of the presence of God. And should I allow that which God has totally rejected? No. No. Not amongst God's people. But we can still understand the context of loving our neighbor. Huh? Loving a, a, loving a, a lost and dying world. Huh? There, there, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, but he doesn't have a relationship with him. That's a different love. That's a different realm of love. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, John 3, 16. Jesus said, if you obey me, he says, then my father will love you. And we will come and make our dwelling with you. That's another realm of love. That's called relationship love. Amen. Uh -huh. And the Lord even takes it further. He said, he says, love your neighbor as yourself. He said, what does he say? Love your enemy too. Oh, my goodness. Dear people, what happens if you and I start pressing into a realm of an anointing for that? You know what's going to happen? 
You're going to discover that God, the Holy Ghost, will supply it because you want to do it. But if you're not willing to step out and start doing it and participating with God, you're not going to have these things. And then as a result, you're not going to have the great weapons of our warfare, which are mighty. People think weapons of the warfare, good in an airplane dumping gallons of oil out on the city. That's no weapons of a warfare. Huh? Just doing all kinds of wild things. I was in a church and I go, oh, no. The guy's going for the paraphernalia, man. He's going. He's got a. He's got a bunch of. He's got a. He's got a gold flag. He's got a red flag and a blue one. <laughs> the red one gets the blood applied. <laughs> Hallelujah. The blue one means it's open heaven now, and the gold means it's raining down from glory. I mean, it's that good. That's good. And then we got these all these little instruments, and these are these are the these are the weapons of our warfare. No. No. They're the fruits of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. The weapons of our warfare more than anything else is praise and thanksgiving. I know it doesn't seem like a great weapon, but when your eyes are open, you begin to see the power and the authority that is in the name of Jesus. There's no weapon like that weapon. Power and the authority of praise. Power and the authority of thanksgiving. Oh, God, I thank you, Father, right now in Jesus' mighty name for taking this church and filling us with the ability that only you have. And you, in your grace and mercy, made it available to us. <laughs> wow. Why would anybody want to be without it? You do have not have to be sad another day in your life. Every bit, listen to me now. I'm going to give you some wisdom. Every bit of sadness and sorrow is an expression of your attachment to the world. Every sadness and sorrow is an expression of your attachment to earthly things. Listen to me. Joy and rejoicing belong to heaven. That's why we're commanded to rejoice evermore. This is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus, that in all things you give thanks. Huh? I'm telling you, when Jesus is all that you need uh, and all that is really important to you, my goodness, and he doesn't change. Oh, happy days. Oh, happy days. When Jesus washed my sins away and he taught me how. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. To live rejoicing every day. Oh, happy day. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost right now that breaks off every yoke, every shackle right now in Jesus' name. Every power of depression, every power of torment, every worldly interest, every earthly care, everything that belongs to a place imprisoned by this worldly cares now in Jesus' name. Everything that belongs to a life imprisoned with sin and darkness, we destroy the power of that right now. I open up your prison doors and I say to you, God has brought you into a large, large place. I, I, I tell you, I prophesy to you right now that God has purposed for you to live in every realm of His divine power and glory from this day forward. And forevermore. He's taking you to a place to rule and reign with him. Now receive in Jesus' name. From this day forward, go around and give the people, give people the greatest word of knowledge that you can give them. Do you know that God has a call on your life and he's purposed to make you great in his kingdom? He's made it all possible through Jesus. We call upon his name right now. What a word of knowledge combined with a word of prophecy. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up from this place. Be strong. Rise up from this place. Be, be confident that he who has begun a good work in you will finish it. He, I don't care how many times you fail. The issue is, do you want to get back up? That's the issue. If you want to get back up and you're really interested in succeeding, God's going to make you successful. And your interest in your, your definition of success is walking before him and being perfect. God said to Abraham, he said, Abraham, walk before me and be perfect. That's what he said. Jesus said, be perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. You know what he's talking about? How we treat people. That's the context. That's the context. How we treat people, how we love them, how we care for them. 
For Father makes the rain fall upon the just and the unjust, causes the sun to shine upon, upon both the righteous and the wicked. Be perfect then, just like your Father in heaven is perfect. I want you to break away today. I want you to stop doing things based upon your finances. You think we would have moved into this place, taken over this, starting to take over this and occupy this $18 million property if we were doing things based upon a financial pocketbook? Huh? Or anything that we can see in the, for, you know, the foreseeable future based upon our own ability? No way. It's a total risk. It's total abandonment to the call. Putting everything on the line. That's how you go to the next place in God. When you're willing to put everything on the line. That's how you get to go to the next place in God. When you're willing to lay it all down. Are you? Calling out to you right now. Are you willing to lay it all down? Are you willing to finally? I had a guy, I was talking to a guy out at the ranch last week. He said, yeah, it took me 25 years to finally surrender myself to the Lord. He said, I sat in church 25 years. He said, I wasn't willing to surrender my life to the Lord. He said, one day, he said, I just decided, you know what? I hadn't done anything of any value anyways. All I've been holding on to has just turned out bad for me. What's money? What's this? What's that? So then I said, you know what? Okay, you know, just a good, honest country boy, right? Okay, I'll give my life, Lord. I'll give it to you. I'm not holding it back. I'll give it to you. He said, that day I was born again. It took me 25 years. I said, there's a lot of people sitting in churches like you. They want to hold on to their life. But they're not quite as honest as you are. They spend a lot of time lying to people and lying to themselves. Today, we ask you, turn your life over to Jesus. Turn your life over to Jesus. Completely turn your life over to Jesus. Don't hold anything back anymore. Watch what he'll do. He'll transform you. He'll change you. The abundant life will fill you. A life... Do you know when Jesus said abundant life? He tried to talk about a life. He tried to talk about a life that human language can't describe. There's no word for it. Whew. God's got a word. God's got a life, an experience for you that there's no word for. More than abundant, super abounding, great beyond all that you think or ask. I want you to stand with me. Father, I thank you right now for putting your blessing upon this people. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus that every yoke is broken now in Jesus' name. That those who are in this place who have not been willing to surrender their life to you completely will suddenly recognize that there's no better life for them to have. <laughs> Lord, those who have surrendered their life but have just not been able to see how to take the next step of walking with you that today their eyes will be open that they'll be able to see the great things that you'll do all they have to do is believe and participate with you now right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I call the fire of God down upon your life Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the authority of heaven strikes your soul. I take authority over every sickness and every disease. I break off its yoke from off of you right now in Jesus' mighty name. Everything that has held you back, every lie, every bad experience that has tried to imprison you, things that have been great disappointments and great discouragements that have held you back, in the name of Jesus, those chains are broken off you now in Jesus' name. By the power and authority of his name, by the power and authority of his word, you go free. You foul spirit of sickness and disease, I command you, go from the body right now. Go from every, uh, every lung, every respiratory disease. I break its power off of you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Every area of depression, every area of mental affliction in the name of Jesus goes from you right now in the name of the Most High God. Father, we thank you for the anointing. Every form of addiction, every form of sin. I break its stronghold from off your life that it cannot deceive you, saying that it is the pleasures you cannot live without. I break the power of that demonic influence now. I command it, go in Jesus' name. Out in the name of the living God. 
No more will you be in prison by the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life. No longer will you live in the ditch of failure. In Jesus' name. Today, be encouraged. Today, receive strong a consolation and comfort from the Holy Ghost. Right now, in Jesus' name. Right now, in the name of the living God. Hallelujah. I want you to just lift your hands towards heaven. Listen, I want you to understand God wants to fill you with praise. Hallelujah. 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 God wants to fill you with praise. He wants to fill you with joy and rejoicing. Hallelujah. No longer, no longer allow Satan, no longer allow Satan to steal your joy and to ruin your life. Don't allow it anymore. It's, it, it is a function of your will because God has purposed that Satan can no longer touch you, mess with you, and take from you this that belongs to the redeemed. For the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and signs shall flee away. Hallelujah. For the Lord himself has given you beauty for ashes. He's given you the oil of joy for mourning. He's giving you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The fire and the glory of his presence fills your life. In Jesus' name. The fire and glory of his power fills your life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. If there's anybody in this place that has not called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and had a change of life, this divine appointment and miracle event is ready to happen for you right now. God has made it so ridiculously simple. All you got to do is call on the name, but that name has all power and authority. And at the mention of a name, demons tremble. At the mention of the name, the worlds are created and formed by the power of his name. And he'll form within you a brand new life, a heavenly life. No longer will it be a life imprisoned with sin and iniquity and self-interest and Temporal pleasures, but a life released into a realm of liberation and abundance, a heavenly realm that's eternal, can't pass away. Just gets better every day. God's calling you. God's calling you. God's calling you. He wants to change your heart. He wants to change your mind. He wants to fill you with love and affection for Him. Will you come? He's calling you. If you've never called upon his name, he's calling you right now. He wants you to come. He wants you to come into the kingdom. He's inviting you. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And Jesus Christ right now is being lifted up. And I know he's drawing every person to himself. Every one of you in here are a gift given to Jesus Christ by the Father God. You're present. That he personally gave to Jesus. It's the Father that draws us. And the Father's drawing you. Those of you who are confident today that you've been born again. And you are a new creation. You're going to have to understand that it's easy through compromises to find your life being taken over. By interest other than the interest of the Holy Ghost. And you become cold. And lukewarm. And the worst condition of all is a lukewarm condition. I call a lukewarm condition, lukewarm condition a backslidden state that the person is not aware of. Cold, you backslidden and you're aware of it. Lukewarm means that you're not burning with the fire of the Holy Ghost and the passion for the things of the kingdom. Jesus said, I would that you read, I read the, that you be hot or cold. Cold, you know what you're doing. And then everybody else knows what you're doing. Lukewarm, you'll have a misrepresentation of the gospel and of the kingdom. Jesus says, repent. Repent. I give you the privilege and the ability to escape that prison. 
Now, and take up again this walk in the Spirit. Take up again this life in the Holy Ghost. Take up again this great calling of God upon you. Hallelujah. Today, right now, I have the cure. I've got the cure. For lukewarmness and sin. His name is Jesus. Father, thank you right now that not a person in this place rejects you. Not one single one. I see every person in this place saying yes to Jesus. Saying yes to his purposes. Yes to the will of the Father. Hallelujah. Are you sick in your body? Anyone sick in your body? Sick and diseased in your body? I command those colds and those viruses to leave you right now. If you've got, you got sickness in your body, I want you to raise your hand. Everybody with sickness in your body, raise your hand. Hold it up high. Now, those that are standing by anyone with their hand raised up, I want you to lay hands on and command the sickness to go. Just lay hands on and command the sickness to go. Command it to go. I command it to go right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kata satara mambate. Amen. Amen. Now, looky here. Let me tell you. Listen, listen. Listen, listen to me, guys. Listen. Listen to me. Listen. Some people are so slow to listen. <laughs> but that's okay. That's one of the first things you want to recognize. It's a manifestation. At least you listen eventually. Huh? But we want to be, we want to be quick to respond to the Holy Ghost to it His way. I discovered in praying for thousands of people, laying hands on thousands of people. When you're laying hands on thousands of people, you, can't let, you don't get to spend too much time. Huh? Because this is it. Sometimes we lay hands on people longer than, than we need to. Just It's an expression of our own unbelief. <laughs> it can be. Not all the times. Just lay hands. You lay hands. And I don't need any manifestation. I don't need any manifestation. I don't need manifestation. I'm doing what the Word said. I don't need a manifestation. The Lord didn't say, lay hands on the sick, and if they fall under the power, then they're healed. He didn't say that. He said, lay hands on the sick, and they should recover. So I'm going to look into another realm. So I, I want you to participate with me in the future, and you see that happen. Now, anybody, anybody still feel sickness in your body? I want you to raise your hand. You still have any kind of sickness in your body? Check yourself. If there's any kind of sickness in your body, raise your hand after people prayed for you. Anybody, come on, just check. Somebody, surely somebody didn't get healed. Everybody got healed? That's beautiful. That works. Hallelujah. Anybody? You don't have to be embarrassed. Kind of feel like what might still be there. Can I talk you into your sickness? If I cannot talk you into your sickness, then I'm telling you, you cured. If you don't let Satan talk you into your sickness, you cured. <laughs> Same thing goes with sin. It's true. <laughs> or discouragement or whatever else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. You have more authority and more power than what you've ever realized. It's all in Jesus. So if you want to understand really what degree and measure of authority and power you have, start doing a study of Him. Start thinking about who He is and make your life about Him. Who He is and what He said, my, you're going to see some powerful results in your life. Praise God. Everybody shout hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah.
I want you to team up with us. I know you need a miracle in finances. We need a miracle in finances. God's given us the solution of how to hook up in faith so that both needs are going to be met, that every need will be met. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, the Lord tells us that if we give, He's going to cause all sufficiency, all sufficiency to abound unto us, that we'll have everything that we need for everything that we're doing. That's pretty radical. He calls all grace to abound unto us. That means every dimension of those things which he possesses. He says, do it liberally, do it cheerfully, do it generously. And you're going to receive, if you give generously, you receive generously. He said, even to the sparing givers, you still got a harvest. It's going to be a sparing harvest, but nonetheless, it's still a harvest. The Lord says, give, and it should be given to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Men will heap into your bosom. These are the promises of God. If you'll hook up with me in faith, then the ministry will have everything that it needs. You'll have all that you need. Because God has, God has commissioned you and I to take care of the poor, take care of the widows, take care of the orphans, take care of the local ministry, and traveling ministry. And he, and he didn't say just one time. It's a continual need and a continual state of giving so therefore God's got a continual means of provision in order for us to be able to be obedient to his will look at that's the way it all works are you with me God's called us to do all these things that go way beyond anything that we have the capacity to do and what he does if we're willing to do it he supplies us with the ability and the resources to accomplish what he has asked us to do all you gotta do is be willing are you willing Hallelujah. Well, amen. Amen. Come worship the Lord with your giving. Worship, worship the name of Jesus. Make your offering look just like Jesus. Make your offering look like something that represents who he is. And watch out for the cords. There's cords laying everywhere. And there's nothing hardly nailed down or fastened down. And find a bunch of people around you and hug them and tell them that you love them. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that everything about your response to the Lord changes from this day forward. If you want to feel greater love in your life today, start hugging a bunch of people and watch what happens. You will begin to participate with a realm of heaven that you didn't even know existed. Start finding a bunch of people, hug them, love them, 